Hello everyone, welcome to my new series of podcast. It's true that investors are willing to invest their capital in a new market to generate more income from the existing one. And determining which business sectors they are about to enter is important. Likewise, considering about other essential aspects like legal system, infrastructure, and you name it before investment is made is crucial. So today I'm going to address the differences between two types of private and limited companies in Indonesia and then sharing with you the advantages, disadvantages, and of course the required capital for each type of investment. Therefore, skipping this podcast is strictly not recommended. And beforehand, I'd like to thank to those who support my YouTube channel and remind those who haven't subscribed yet, please hit subscribe button and click the uppermost bell icon to get a notification once a new video is uploaded. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, talking about investment is always intriguing. Prior to make any investment, investors start questioning about where and when is the best time to invest. What sort of information should be obtained and how? Why should they invest in this and that country? Well, I will let you answer to these questions. So what do we know about private and limited liability company? A private company is a type of private owned business which is funded by either an individual investor or more than one investors in the form of partnerships. For example, Mr. Miso is a sole proprietor of a small trading company. He trades nearly everything as long as it generates income. The owner finances all business operations with his own capital. He keeps all the profits after deducting his personal income tax. However, he is liable for all the company's losses and obligations. In case of bankruptcy, all his assets are used to pay his debt and other obligations. Another example is that Mr. Sukram, Mr. Miso, and Ms. Aleb set up a partnership firm namely Genius Service. This is an information and technology firm that provides IT consulting services. They share the required amount of investment capital to run their business activities. They keep the earning profits after paying their personal income taxes, but they are also liable for business losses and obligations. In case of bankruptcy, all their assets are exercised to settle the company's debt and obligation. Now let's move on to the definition of private limited liability company. A private limited liability company is a type of private owned business either owned by the members of family or by the number of investors or the number of shareholders who share the ownership and liabilities. The legal standing for these types of businesses allow the company to segregate between the assets of shareholders and the assets of directors in case of bankruptcy and loss of the businesses. For example, Miso Brothers Limited is a family-owned business entity that manufactures interior and exterior furniture. The family members invest as shareholders of the company. The company shares its earning profit with the shareholders after corporate tax has been paid. The investors in this family business are not liable for the business losses in case of bankruptcy. Another example of private limited liability liability company is Les Fruits Limited. It's an Indonesian agricultural company that produces and trades diverse fruit in the country. The company has a number of shareholders, so it's obvious that the capital investment is shared within the shareholders. The company distributes its profit to the shareholders after corporate tax has been paid. Furthermore, the shareholders, owners of the company are not liable for the company's liabilities and obligations in the case of bankruptcy or loss of the business. The company may issue corporate bonds but sell them only to the private investors instead. And so here are the differences between two types of private companies in Indonesia. The private limited liability companies and private unlimited liability companies are the most common type of business structure in Indonesia. And depending on the ownerships, the private limited liability companies or namely Perseruan Terbatas aka PT in Indonesia are classified into two categories. First category is limited liability or namely PT which stands for Perseruan Terbatas. So what is Perseruan Terbatas? 
Plus or PT. PT is a private limited liability company owned by the Indonesian citizens. This can be group of family members that materialize their business plan into a PT where all capital investments are obtained from the members of the family itself. The owners of the family is definitely the family members alone and this type of business structure cannot issue shares or corporate bonds to the general public. Some examples of this type of business in Indonesia are Piti Sahit Group, main business is in the hospitality industry, Piti Samatra where the main business is in the gas industry, Piti Maspion which stands for Mangaja Anda Selalu Percaya Industri Olahan in National. Some of the respective companies are going public yet they are classified as family business and Piti Mirajus Line sea transport and logistics industry that's another example of family business that remains private either way pt can consist of several investors where required capital investments are obtained from different shareholders this type of firm may issue some shares depending on how much the additional required capital to advance the current business however the shares can only be sold to private investors instead. I give you an example, Piti Jualo, a marketplace provider company for used goods to be resold to public based on the information and technology. And then Piti Wing Surya, a consumer goods manufacturer such as detergent, soaps, snacks, and so on. And the second category is the Varain Limited Company or PT Penanaman Modal Asing, shortly PMA. PT PMA is commonly known to Western investors who want to develop their businesses in Indonesian market. It's a limited liability company which the number of shares are owned by foreign investors. Upon the grant authorization, the economic activities in Indonesia can be carried out. PTPMA can be either 100% foreign owned or partially foreign owned, meaning that the investment involves the Indonesian partners. For example, L'Oreal, French company, built its manufacturing plant in Indonesia and is aimed at distributing the products in the Southeast Asian market. Another example is that PT Berry Kalibut Comixtra and PT Comixtra Mayora Indonesia, they both have 60 and 40% of the ownership. They are working together to produce best quality of processed chocolate. L'Oreal, another one is Oceanic Cattle, Livestock Industry. And then Dry Dog World, a ship producer invested in Batam, Indonesia to expand their businesses. And in fact, this foreign company is based in Dubai. As I said at the beginning of this video that business sectors and other essential aspects have to be considered before investing, why foreign investors are not allowed to own 100% of their businesses in Indonesia in some certain sectors or certain sectors are partially close to foreign investors. I guess you can figure out why foreign investors are not allowed to own 100% or partially in certain economic sectors in Indonesia or even if in any other countries whenever it's in the uh, strategic sectors. So in what economic sectors can foreign investors invest in Indonesia? Well, the answer is available online, so you can find out more information about it, uh, which sectors that foreign investors are eligible to invest in Indonesia. And uh, here in the description, you can find the link. And how can foreign investors know about which economic sector is partially close to foreign direct investment? Well, foreign investors will know by looking at the indicator like the maximum percentage of foreign ownership. What does maximum percentage of foreign ownership mean? This means that, you know, foreign investors will need to find an Indonesian business partner to engage in a specific sector that they want to invest. Now, here is the wrap up. Private companies are determined into two categories. Sole proprietor partnership are categorized as unlimited liability companies that do not protect the wealth of the owners if the businesses are out of market or bankrupt or even failed. Private limited liability. This is a common business practice in Indonesia. It's a kind of family business where the capital is from the family members and privately held. Other type of private limited liability company comprises many shareholders and the firm may issue shares that can only be sold to private investors. Another private limited liability is the foreign limited company. 
where investors can be 100% foreigners and can be partially foreigners. In fact, the differences are laid on the ownership and the rights. Well, I hope that this first podcast on the differences between two types of limited liability companies in Indonesia and the real examples shown here are fruitful and that will help broadening your knowledge. The advantages, disadvantages and the required capital investment for limited liability companies will be brought to you in the second episode. So if you find this podcast is interesting and adding a value, then don't forget to hit like, subscribe to this channel, comments and share this video with your friends. All right. Thanks a lot for watching and supporting this channel. Till here, I'm Didi Lojavani. See you again in the next episode.